Today we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of athletes um, slip up on, whether you are a fighter, whether you're a powerlifter, weightlifter, uh, anybody who competes in a weight division or weight class sport uh, typically screws up a lot of their training in the fight week, in the competition week, you know, uh, whatever, whatever sport it is that you play. Because they would have done all their training in the lead up to the competition uh, and everything has gone well. But on the week of competition, because they have to uh, cut weight and they do it improperly for a couple of reasons, whether the, the lead up to um, the competition has been bad, as in they haven't, uh, they haven't started with the correct diet from like months ago, or uh, they panic and they do things that causes them to lose too much weight too quickly, right? They do things that uh, really impacts their, uh, their body as a whole, overstresses it more than it needs to be. And so they lose a lot more weight than needed. And uh, this can really significantly uh, cause problems. So I'm gonna talk about how to actually uh, bring about a proper, uh, like a weight cutting strategy um, on a surface level. Now, obviously, uh, on a deeper level, to do it properly, you need to get your coaches to run you through it, somebody experienced to run you through it. But uh, at least for you to have a basic education and understanding, so you know what decisions you can at least make for yourself, uh, this is the things that, sh that you need to keep in mind. All right? So firstly, before we begin, uh, understand that in order to improve and maximize your chances of having a good uh, weight cutting strategy in the lead up to competition, you should be responsible enough to keep your body weight as close to competition uh, weight as possible, okay? It, even, even when you're not competing, even three months, four months, five months out, right? Uh, if you are being irresponsible or you think it's like a uh, hardcore or something like that to lose, you know, uh, eight, nine, ten percent of your body weight in a short period of time leading into competition, you're an idiot, and any uh, performance detriments that you get on the day, frankly, you deserve. But you got to understand that you you have to keep uh, your weight on target as close as you can. Now, that doesn't mean that if you, for example, compete at 80 kilos, you have to be 80 or even 81 kilos. Uh, you can be hovering close to that. You know, if you're even 84, 85 kilos, you can still like uh, come into the taper week and still be able to get there, especially with a 24 hour weigh-in. But if you need to be 80 kilos and you're just uh, reckless about it and you're walking around at 90, 92 kilos with no regards to what your weight should be and getting that weight down as early as possible to be you know, 83, 84, maybe 85 at the most, then uh, you're just being irresponsible and you're going to affect uh, your performance regardless, even if you get your body weight down to 80 kilos, which is possible, right? You just have to do a much more aggressive cut. So it's definitely possible, uh, but that doesn't, just because something is doable or possible, that doesn't make it optimal, right? So uh, that's the first thing you need to, you need to understand. Um, the other thing is, so, so, so let's get past that now, right? We're going to assume that everybody listening to this uh, is responsible and uh, is going to keep their body weight close to uh, the amount they need to be when they're, when they're on competition week, when they're approaching competition, right? So with regards to um, cutting weight during the taper week, you really have four to five different methods of, of cutting weight. One is water loading. The other is uh, reducing fiber. The other is reducing sodium. And uh, the other is um, uh, like hydration. So like, uh, like sauna and uh, sitting in a, uh, like a hot tub, like warm, warm water and stuff like that. So basically dehydrating yourself, right? You know, further to that. Now, um, what's important to understand is, um, and also that there is, there is a, other than sauna, there's also dehydration in, in the sense of just cutting out water, right? Just flat out like cutting out water. Now, uh, I'm going to begin with uh, 
essentially what would be the least uh, detrimental, the least stressful to the body, and, and go, we'll work our way to the most stressful to the body, all right? And the least stressful way of cutting weight uh, to the body is by fiber reduction. So uh, food that we eat, uh, a lot of it has fiber, and fiber is slow to digest by nature. And so it can sit there for quite a number of days, actually, in the gut, right? Uh, it can take sometimes up to five days for all the like the food that we ate from five days ago to pass through uh, the gastrointestinal tract. And most of that is, like most of what will be left by the end of the five days is just fiber. Before that, all the rest of the stuff would be either absorbed or passed through already, right? So it can take anywhere between two to five days to pass uh, all the food that we've eaten through our um, gastrointestinal tract. Now, that food obviously has weight. That fiber has weight. And um, if we can reduce that weight, if we can expel as much of the food uh, leftover, uh, that fiber out of our system, obviously we, when we step on the scale, we don't have to weigh that as well as our actual weight, right? So we can lose up to about 1.5% of our body weight uh, by just getting rid of fiber. So if you weigh 100 kilos, and if you just reduced fiber and you kept eating carbs, kept eating, drinking water, everything else is normal, did nothing else, didn't do any saunas or anything like that, you could uh, come in at about uh, 98 and a half kilos, right? And, and weigh in. And obviously that's great, right? That's a, that's a, that's a fair bit of a weight loss there uh, for something that is not strenuous at all. You just have to uh, cut fiber out. And, and so how much do you actually reduce fiber? Uh, you want to reduce to less than 10 grams per day about three days before weighing, okay? Uh, that's, that's going to guarantee that, that you would have gotten rid of, uh, you know, pretty much a, a, a predominant amount of the fiber that's in your, in your system, right? Now, uh, you got to understand a lot of the weight loss uh, sort of strategies like sodium reduction, water loading, fiber reduction, all that stuff, is only going to be effective to its maximal degree if you're already having much more than that, right? So if you're already somebody who doesn't have a lot of fiber in their diet, cutting out fiber is not gonna get you a 1.5% reduction. It might not even get you any reduction, right? We've heard of cases where people do um, water loading and it doesn't really affect them. And that's usually because uh, or at least in one one sense because they might already be uh, drinking a lot of water uh, in their normal day-to-day -day life. So them sort of just all of a sudden cutting out water doesn't really make a difference because that's how much they normally drink anyway. But if you were, if you were drinking, say, three liters of water a day normally and now you start drinking eight liters, reducing that uh, during a water load, that's going to have a much more effect. Me so what I'm trying to say is, whatever you do in terms of weight cutting has to have been uh, significantly different to what you used to do, right? For it to have a good desired, like maximal effect. Otherwise, it really won't have that much of an effect. It might have a little bit of an effect, but it won't have that much of an effect. So <clears throat> that's why it's good to have good dietary habits from the early days. Don't have like a low carb uh, diet if you if you know you're going to use cutting out carbs as one of the uh, strategies for cutting weight, which can actually be very effective. But if somebody's having like 200 grams of carbs a day, which is which is not much, and they uh, come to cut carbs out, they're going to have to cut much more carbs down, right? They're going to have to be like under 50 grams. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so that difference has to be much more drastic than somebody who normally has, like it has a good diet, has been optimized, and they normally have, say, for example, 500 grams of carbs, right? Somebody who's got 500 grams of carbs, they can cut down to like even 200 grams of carbs, right? 150 grams of carbs a day, which is still fairly generous for being in a, in a taper week, like cutting weight, and still notice the effects of weight cutting, right? So... Uh, Back to, back to what we were talking about, which was the, the fiber aspect, right? So what you want to do when it, when it comes to, to cutting out the fiber, one of the first strategies you want to use is replace 
brown varieties of things with, with white varieties. So instead of brown bread, have white bread, right? Instead of like sweet potato, have white potato. And you also want to, uh, for example, in the case of like fruits and vegetables, have um, uh, skinless vegetables. So like take the skin off potatoes, for example. You want to have like soft vegetables as much as possible. So like mashed potatoes uh, is better than, than like solid potatoes, as an example. Um, other other good examples, other good replacements is is to just have a predominantly your diet for that week for the taper week to uh, base it around dairy, meat, and, and any other low fiber stuff. So basically, kind of like a carnival diet, right? Um, where you know anything like like meat, obviously no fiber, right? Dairy, no fiber. So anything like that. Don't like you got to forget about like vegetables and and. Uh, and anything that's high in fiber like that. Uh, anything that you have, uh, if it is gonna be any kind of a vegetable, should ideally be like soft or mashed, right? Uh, you wanna avoid uh, brown rice, avoid noodles, avoid like brown bread, um, yogurt with fruits in it, right? Uh, you wanna avoid even like raw fruit and vegetables. Uh, you know, raw food, like for example, um, apples, right? Especially apples with skin. Uh, fruit juices is better especially without pulp and things like that. Again, because it's obviously it's liquid form, it can pass through the system much easier. There's no residue. Um, uh, avoid like beans, right? Pulses, uh, nuts, uh, any seeds, anything like that, you wanna, you wanna stay away from. You, you wanna go more towards, it depending again on, on how, much, how much carbs you, you can have and are going to have. White rice, white pasta, white bread, um, White potato, peeled and mashed, preferably. Uh, any kind of cereals with less than uh, one gram of fiber, right? Uh, so like cocoa pups, rice bubbles. Um, if you're going to have fruit, canned fruit is a little bit better because it's softer. It tends to be softer. Avocados or, or like very ripe bananas tends to be also a, a good go-to. Um, and uh, yeah, just dairy, plain milk, yogurt. Uh, th these are all good alternatives that you can have uh, during that a week of uh, cutting weight, all right? So basically three days prior to weighing, you wanna start to cut down fiber as low as possible below uh, 10 grams per day, right? And if you do this, you can lose up to one and a half percent of your body weight uh, come weighing time, just through this method, no, nothing else, right? Um, and, and try not to do this for more than three days out, like don't do this for the whole week of the t of the competition week, because you to cut out fiber for that long can lead to uh, gastrointestinal tract problems, um, upset stomach, especially because after you do your weigh-in, uh, you're going to have to be having you're going to have normal food again, right? And that can that can cause stomach issues as well, and that can be terrible. I mean, first of all, it can take a couple of days to really get over it. Uh, so even a 25-hour weigh-in might not be enough, and God help you if it's like a two-hour weigh-in, right? You, you might not be able to perform at all, literally. Uh, the other one, so the next one, the next uh, low-risk uh, way of cutting, uh, cutting weight is carbs, right? Cutting out carbs. Uh, now, every gram of carb is stored with between two to four grams of water. It depends where it's stored in the body right, uh, where that carb is stored in the body. Depending on where it's stored in the body, anywhere between two to four grams of water is stored with every gram of carb, right? So you store about 120 grams of carbs in your liver and around your body, around 500 grams of carbs is stored in your uh, muscle, right? Now, if you start to deplete all of this, right, uh, so you're talking over 600 grams of carbs, uh, stored carbs, that's stored with water. So not only do you lose the 600 gram, now assuming this, you go complete depletion, right? Which we don't want to, but assuming, right? Just to illustrate an example for you, you're talking 600 grams of just the loss there from just the carbs. And then alongside that is the water that's attached to those carbs, right? Even if you go at, a, at the lower end, which is two grams of carbs attached to every gram, that's twice, so two times six, that's um, 1.2 kilos, right? So you're talking almost two kilos of weight loss there. And that's, again, being on the generous side with just two grams of carbs attached to every, uh, two grams of water attached to every gram of carb, right? So um, now you got to understand 
you you are not trying to deplete as much carbs as possible here and the reason is especially especially if you are uh, competing in any sport where there is strength and power required in that sport it's not like a longer duration uh, sort of lower intensity uh, sport right even in those sports you probably see uh, performance detriments but especially you'll see sport uh, performance detriments in any sport that requires uh, maximum power output maximum strength output especially on a repeated sort of basis uh, and it's just generally high intensity go 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 right so um, strong man right power lifting weight lifting um, boxing combat sports boxing wrestling jiu-jitsu uh, kickboxing these things would, would get affected if you were to deplete that much okay so you want to minimize that depletion because there's a higher risk of um, performance loss okay because uh, carbs are the body's uh, number one source of fuel when it comes to high performance uh, output high performance work output okay um, so that's why you want to make sure that that uh, you minimize the depletion and yes you can you can replenish a lot of these carbs if it's a 24-hour weigh-in you won't be able to replenish everything completely with a two-hour weigh-in. Uh, as the day goes on, sure, by the time you get to, for example, maybe for, in the case of powerlifting, as you get to like bench press or deadlifts, yes, maybe you, you would have replenished a little bit more, you know, even quite a bit more. But your squat might suffer, right? The first, if you're, if you're in strongman, the first couple of events might suffer, right? So you want to minimize that. Uh, but understandably, you, you might have to resort to that. And, and usually people do have to resort to that, right? Again, luckily, usually with strongman, it's not same day weighing, it's 24 hour weighing, uh, but yeah, just something to keep in mind, right? Um, now, there are two ways to remove carbs from like being stored. One is just through depletion, like not having carbs, right? Uh, taking them out from the diet, um, X amount of days out, which I'll get to in a second. And the other one is to do anaerobic exercise. Highly do not recommend, right? But uh, sometimes it's required because you have, let's just say you've gone to weigh in and you're, you thought you'd be on, you're just off, right? And you don't have much time now to lose more weight. A lot of times what you actually see people do is uh, they'll jump on a bike or go for a, or for a walk or a run, uh, like, a, like a small, like a low intensity jog prior to weighing and they still don't make weight. What you're actually better off doing, again, highly not recommended, is going for like sprints or like higher intensity sort of interval work uh, if you're really desperate to lose the weight because you need to burn the carbs. And as you burn the carbs, you also get not only sweat, if, especially if you're wearing multiple layers of clothes, but you'll also, um, uh, you'll also uh, lose the, uh, the water that's attached to those carbs, right? Again, that's last resort, all right? Try not to, try not to do that. Try to make sure you're on, on weight, right? So um, in regards to uh, cutting out uh, carbs, if you have at least four hours between uh, weighing and competing, you can do more of a depletion and, and still be able to sort of replenish a lot of those carbs, right? Just understand again, it depends how much carbs you've had in the first place, normally day to day, and, and that's gonna determine how much you can lose, right? But basically, uh, depending on how much you have to lose, anywhere between three to seven days out from weighing, you wanna to start to uh, bring down um, carbohydrate intake, right? So uh, this, can, this can reduce your body weight, like if you deplete carbs, it can reduce your body weight by uh, anywhere up to 2%. So you got one and a half percent from fiber now, and another 2% from carbs, right? So that's three and a half percent, it's pretty significant, right? Just these two alone can, uh, uh, can probably get you to to uh, make weight without you needing to do any sauna or, or like anything else on top of that, right? So, and also as a rule of thumb, uh, you want to be um, 50 grams or under per day uh, when you're cutting out carbs. Now, you might do it in a case where you kind of step it down because earlier in the week of competition, uh, certain athletes, certain sports, they still have training. It's shorter in, in duration, but it, the intensity is still there. 
So you might uh, cut it down instead of, for example, going to 50 grams per day, you might, you might uh, in the, earlier in the week, decide to go from what you would normally have, which is like 300 grams, you go down to 150 grams uh, for that maybe first one or two sessions of the week that are more intense. Then you reduce it down to 100 grams for that maybe another set, just depends what, what how many sessions you've got, right? Maybe you've got another session that's like very light and very short, so you just might have like 100 grams, maybe not even, right? And then after that, for the rest of the the, uh, the week, so like minimum three days out from weighing, you should be 50 grams a day, right? And uh, that can reduce your body weight by up to 2%, like I said. Um, now, so so that's, that's carb cutting. In regards to... Uh, the next strategy, which is water loading, uh, you, uh, that's the next uh, sort of thing you'd go to, ideally, uh, without resorting yet to sodium, like depletion, doing anything with sodium, because that can be a little bit more dangerous, okay? So uh, with water loading, you wanna keep it very simple, right? It's, it's uh, very straightforward. There is no exact protocol, by the way, uh, just so you guys know, studies have been done on different protocols, how much to have, blah, blah, blah. It's just about having a lot and then not having much, right? Uh, again, it depends on how much water you're normally having through the week, the day-to-day -day life, and then just, just uh, in accordance with that, it will have an effect. Keep this in mind. If you already have a lot of water through the day because you work outdoors, it's warm, you, you just naturally drink a lot of water, it it's, can be not a good idea for you to have, uh, for you to do water loading. Because for example, if you n normally drink, say nine liters of water through the day because you work outdoors, you have a physical job and stuff like that. If you were to water load, that means you, you have to go much more above uh, nine liters. And there is a certain, um, there's a certain limit to which the kidneys uh, can f go through and filter through water and, and liquid uh, through the day. Right, and uh, you already being so high, uh, it, it it's probably not a good idea for you to go go any higher. All right, now that limit is not it's not like nine or ten liters, but uh, it's uh, I think from memory it's like maybe fifteen liters of uh, liquid per day. Right, so um, if you're already having like nine liters and you got to go to like you can't go to ten, that's not enough of a difference, right? you'd have to go to above 10 somewhere. So that's, that's not a good idea. Now, obviously nine liters is a lot of water that I haven't met anybody who has that much in a day, but I'm just letting everybody know, cause this is important. Uh, this isn't, this video is just for informational purposes and, uh, and doing things like this, it needs to ideally really be um, done alongside a, a doctor's and a medical professional's um, advice and ideally even uh, physical like uh, observation, okay? So, uh, back to what I was saying, uh, the, the amount that you can lose through water loading really is dependent on um, uh, what you're normally consuming. But as a rule of thumb, you wanna have about 100 mil per day for every kilo of body weight, all right? And then on, uh, so this is, this is, uh, this is uh, five days out from, from weighing, you, you'll do this, right? So, um, for the first three days, you would have um, 100 mil per kilo of body weight. The fourth day, being the day before weighing, you would reduce that to about 15 mil per kilo of body weight. Uh, and then obviously on the weighing day, you have, you have nothing, right? Um, and uh, like this, just this by itself can, uh, can bring about another one and a half to 2% of uh, weight loss there just by itself, right? And again, that's without any changes to your sodium intake, just keeping it the same as you are, right? And um, a lot of times even, when it comes to uh, fluid restriction, uh, just doing, just having normal intake and then the day before uh, wanes, just reducing it to like 300 mil for the whole day, even that, I, I've done it, and even that by itself is sufficient to reduce a fair bit of uh, body weight, right? One, one and a half percent for some people, especially um, uh, bigger guys, more heavy, heavy weight, heavier weight competitors and athletes. 
uh, even 2% uh, can be reduced just like that, right? No need for previous water loading, just cutting it out, right? Especially if there's somebody who normally drinks a lot of water anyway. So uh, that's how you do water loading, okay? Uh, sodium restriction is the last one. Now, this one, uh, I gotta stress, it can be, uh, it can be dangerous. Uh, so, as I said, I'm, I'm ranking these in a hierarchy of like uh, least to kind of most dangerous. Uh, so, be very careful with this one. Again, this is for informational purposes only. Uh, I highly recommend you, you seek uh, medical advice and guidance while you do this, okay? But, in my experience, for myself, uh, what you want to do is in the last three days out from weighing, you want to reduce sodium to about 500 uh, milligrams per day or less, right? Um, uh, now, the, the, the most important thing is sodium itself. Uh, don't worry about a lot of people like uh, start paying too much attention to like magnesium, potassium and stuff like that. Sodium itself is the is the main um, main one you want to keep an eye on. Uh, but really, other than that, there's not much more to it than that. It's just literally three days out. You want to reduce to 500 milligrams or less per day uh, of uh, sodium intake, uh, and you can do that by like oven roasting your your uh, meats, uh, protein supplements. Still, be careful though. Have a look at the the label because a lot of uh, protein powders are still pretty high in sodium um, low salt spreads are out there you can get them um, if you're going to have any kind of vegetables like you, uh, you uh, steam them right steamed vegetables peanut butter amazing so anything uh, like fat anything basically um, oven roasted in terms of like uh, meat and uh, salt reduced sort of fats right you can get salt reduced butter peanut butter uh, jelly Right, uh, all of those things can um, can be used and can be part of your diet. Because especially things like, for example, like jelly, right? They also have the added benefit of having low fiber. Same thing with like peanut butter. Same thing with reduce uh, reduce salt uh, butter, right? And the oven roasted meats. So they they fit the uh, the building. They overlap into the other things, right? And again, <clears throat> same thing applies. If you're normally somebody who doesn't have a lot of salt in their diet, reducing salt to less than 500 milligrams per day, which isn't actually that much, uh, will not yield you as much uh, weight loss as somebody who has uh, 5,000 milligrams a day, just as an example, right, of sodium intake. Um, so again, keep that in mind. And that's and when I say keep that in mind, I actually mean keep it in mind and see what kind of Changes you need to make beforehand, right? Three, four months out. Um, so if you know you're gonna you're gonna do, uh, for example, carb reduction, and you're looking at your diet right now, and you're following some sort of a diet structure where it's really low carbs, well, just understand. Either you need to change that diet structure uh, so that you are having more carbs, which I highly recommend since you, carbs are needed for training and for recovery and for muscle building and so many other things. Or if you're going to uh, not change your dietary structure for whatever reason that you have, then understand that uh, you're going to have to take other measures, right? You have to uh, change expectations. Carb reduction is probably not going to be very effective for you leading into the competition, into the taper week. Uh, you might have to take measures earlier on to be on weight, to be closer to your competition weight uh, by the time the taper week comes around, right? So keep that in mind. And then finally, uh, you've got uh, sweating, right? Uh, as a way of cutting weight, which is uh, something that's done often, but probably done a little bit overdone, right? Uh, almost as a, as a way of panic. It's something that's really technically ra last resort, but people just do it Kind of regardless without um, thinking it out like planning it out so firstly uh, let me just say this is the most dangerous of all the other uh, methods that I've mentioned this must be uh, preferably done with uh, medical supervision and with somebody like with you whilst you're doing it don't do this by yourself especially if you've already done the other uh, depletion methods and you also need to do this to make weight so just want to make that very, very clear. The other thing is, 
any more than um, 5% of weight cutting from sweating is not recommended, um, especially if you don't have at least four hours between weighing and competition time, because it's not going to be enough time for you to, uh, to replace the fluid that's been lost properly. All right. Um, if you have at least four hours time, no more than 3% is recommended typically, right? 3% of, uh, of weight loss through sweating. And uh, if, you, if you have less than uh, four hours, um, it, it's not recommended at all, right? Sweating is, is ideally not recommended at all, like not to do it at all, right? Um, I know people do it, but, but uh, really, in reality, it's, it's not recommended. Uh, you should be able to lose the weight you need to lose through the other me methods mentioned above, um, without needing to uh, resort to sweating. And if, you, and if you can't lose the weight, because if you add it up, like I said, five is 1.5%, the other ones are each like about 2%, right? That's quite a bit of weight that, that you can lose through all of those uh, cumulatively, right? If you still need to do sweating and you're on a 12 hour wane after doing all of that stuff, Frankly, it probably means that your diet was terrible in, in the earlier days and you didn't uh, stay close to, close to weight um, sort of year round, right? So you need to revisit some other problems, okay? But if you've got uh, like say 24 hour weighing uh, for certain sports as certain sports do, then uh, it, it's, it's more possible, right? To, uh, to um, lose, for example, 5% uh, through um, sweating. Now, uh, understand that this is the most dangerous of, of all of them, as I mentioned. And um, the way we're working this is sweating happens to cool off the body, obviously. But when, when, uh, when we do it continuously, you start to lose fluid from within the bloodstream itself. And the reason why this is dangerous is because as you lo lose that blood, uh, that, that fluid from within the bloodstream... That fluid goes from, from the bloodstream into the cells in, towards the skin so that it can be evaporated and you can cool yourself down. As that happens, your blood gets thicker and thicker and that can increase chances of, uh, of problems, blood clotting and, and uh, circulatory problems and uh, cardiac problems. Okay, This is why it's something that's not uh, super recommended, at least to do like in an extreme sense. And um, uh, and the other thing is when you lose a lot of uh, a lot of fluid through sweating, it and and a lot of that fluid has come through uh, the the fluid loss in the bloodstream. It takes a long time for that fluid to get replaced. It it doesn't just happen in a couple of hours. And the mistake a lot of athletes make is that is in their rehydration process. So after they weigh in, they just have like a lot of them just have water or, uh, or some other thing that's not quite suitable. There needs to be the, the right intake of, um, uh, um, of electrolytes so that the liquid that you ingest actually uh, gets absorbed back into the bloodstream. Okay. Um, this is very, very important. And, uh, and for this reason, uh, two things need to always be considered one is how much weight you actually lose through sweating and and try and minimize that as much as possible and two the rehydration process after you've actually done your weighing if you've also used uh, sweating as a as a way of doing things right so um understand one thing putting the body in a in a like a heated situation and for a prolonged period of time uh, can actually spike your um your fight or flight response so it can actually stress the body out more so it can impact your recovery more um when when you which is actually the opposite of what you want right it's taper week you should be recovering you should be in a in a, a rest and recover mode rather than fight or flight mode and this is part of the reason why sauna is actually not recommended ideally because saunas uh, are typically heated uh, to much more than is needed for sweating to occur. And uh, the added issue is that there's no 
evaporation that can occur to heat the body down. So you start getting like overheating problems. It stresses the body out further and further and further. And on top of that, now you are starting to, depending on how long you're in there for and what the temperature is, you're starting to um, cause heat exhaustion. And uh, you're, you're starting to uh, draw more fluid out from the bloodstream than is necessary. What is actually recommended is that you do the sweating in a, in a hot tub, right? Uh, you fill out like a bathtub uh, in, with, with water that's about 40 degrees. And you sit in there. So all of the parts of your body that are submerged is 100% humidity, uh, obviously, in the water. So you get optimal sweating going for that, those parts of your body that are, that are submerged. But the rest of your body, like your arms, like your head, are outside of the water. So uh, the environment of the bathroom is a little bit cooler. So it's not as um, strenuous uh, psychologically, right? So it doesn't set off your stress response as much, your fight or flight response as much. It's, a, it's easier to deal with and it's just at the right temperature for sweating to occur optimally. And uh, like that's all you need to be able to sweat. Like that, that, you know, 39, 40 degrees Celsius is enough for sweating to occur and for, for the weight loss um, that you're after to happen. You don't need like a 70 degree sauna or 80 degree sauna for, for that to, just because it's hotter doesn't make it like any faster uh, in any particular sense. So uh, you would just uh, uh, go in, into the uh, bathtub, uh, sit in there and uh, every so often you get out, say every 15, 20 minutes, dry yourself off, weigh yourself again, see how much you are. If you need to continue, you can continue, right? And, uh, and so that's how uh, you would actually um, ideally do it when it comes to um, sweating, if you need to sweat, all right? So uh, just, to, just to recap on that, if it's, uh, if it's up to a two hour weighing window from your weighing to, to competition, Ideally, no body weight uh, should be lost through um, sauna or, or sweating. But if you have to, up to a maximum of 2% of your body weight, making sure that you rehydrate properly immediately after weighing. If you have uh, anywhere up to 12 hours, you, you, you have a bit, little bit more leeway. You can do like 3% of your body weight loss. And if you have 24 hours, you know, 12 to 24 hours, uh, that's when you can go a little bit harder, go towards that 5% mark and, and lose sweat uh, in that regard. Now, the important part, uh, after you actually do your weighing, you have to replenish. And the replenishment is simple, but uh, uh, you, can, you can make mistakes here, and a lot of people do. So, firstly, uh, for every liter or every kilo of uh, weight you lost through sweating, you should have one and a half liters of water uh, and 1,000 milligrams of sodium, okay? And uh, per hour, right? For a couple of hours after, uh, for say two hours after, right? Um, just to make sure that the water is replenished and uh, the sodium is also replenished that you, that you would have lost through the sweating, which is very important. But if you, if you haven't really done any like major weight loss through the sweating, Still, uh, in terms of post weighing, you would want to replenish water and electrolytes. Uh, so, with electrolytes, try not to have just Powerade. Try to actually get a pharmaceutical grade electrolyte from the pharmacy. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, you want to replace sodium. That's that's your main thing. But any any good electrolyte drink will have a obviously a combination of sodium, potassium, magnesium. Uh, so replenish water and electrolytes. Uh, you just sip on that. Uh, throughout the course of an hour don't just like uh, you know smash it all down in one go um, you might start to feel bloated there's not there's nothing particularly wrong with it it's just that you haven't had anything to eat or drink for a while you might start you might feel re uh, really bloated speaking of which don't have any foods that you don't normally have all of a sudden change something because you heard it was a superfood or something like that just have the same things you always have Okay. This is very important. Uh, a lot of athletes just bring these weird foods to, to competition days to have after weighing for some reason thinking that it's, it's going to be different and they end up having uh, gastrointestinal issues. So just have the normal foods that you normally have and you want to prioritize uh, getting carbs back in. So immediately after weighing, especially if you've, if you've uh, had a, you know, you've depleted quite a bit like carbs, uh, sodium, right? Like you've done a lot of those, a lot of the mentioned strategies. 
you want to have something simple, like like delicious to eat, something that you really like, and simple to digest, predominantly carbs, no fats, no protein, or, or, or as little as possible, right? Uh, the reason is because not because fats and proteins are bad, but because they tend to slow down digestion. And you want to have uh, carbohydrate sources that digest really quickly, and are going to be absorbed and get put back into muscle tissue ASAP. Uh, so when it's time to go, it's, it's, uh, you're ready to go. You feel good. You feel normal, right? So uh, that can be anything that you like. It can be some Nutella uh, on a Nutella sandwich with honey and, and some chopped up bananas. It could be anything you like. But just keep it simple. Low fiber also. That's another important thing. Keep in mind you've had uh, low fiber um, uh, intake habits for like three three days or so right if you all of a sudden give your body a fair bit of fiber again you're going to probably have some uh, gi issues you might feel bloated um just just might not feel good right so uh, with the fiber uh, take it easy uh, reintroduce it slowly into the into the body first have obviously like uh, something easy to digest with lots of carbs have your electrolytes have your water uh, and over the course of the next couple of hours, slowly start to uh, introduce fiber to the to the body. And if you do those things, then um, you should be good to go. That would that would be a successful uh, weight cutting, uh, like a taper week, uh, where you can lose, you know, as mentioned, so much of your body weight when you accumulate all of those different strategies together, and uh, and. Uh, using those replenishment methods depending on how many hours you've got until from weighing until competition time uh, you can uh, really be on track right um, on the uh, competition during the competition itself you just want to be having depending on how long the comp is going to go for you just want to be having a regular intake of predominantly fast acting carbs um, so that you're topped up with carbs in your bloodstream right ready to go so it doesn't have to be broken down this is again more and more important the the more high paced your sport is right uh, so for like wrestlers uh bjj athletes you know they're obviously in a tournament there's there's match after match and the matches can be high paced lots of output right you want to have a constant in stream of carbs sort of in your bloodstream uh, so that they're ready to go so that the body doesn't have to take the time to break down carbs from muscle or worse yet use fats as as uh, the, the primary source of fuel um, you want to have a constant uh, intake of uh, electrolytes again same thing have some salty snacks at hand like potato chips and things like that and uh, other than that you're good to go everything else is preference some people really like eating uh, during intermissions on competition day they can actually have a sandwich or like a bowl of rice with chicken or something like that some people can't i can't uh i like to have a relatively pretty much empty stomach the whole day and just uh, consume like um, simple foods to digest liquid form um carbohydrates and uh, that helps keep me focused as much as possible but uh that's a little uh that's a lowdown on um weight cutting on uh, competition week hope that helps guys